Father, thank you for your love. What a wonderful thing to know that Jesus loves us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for the wonderful things you reveal to us in your ways. And dearest of them all is that we are loved by you. For it is written, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. For while we are yet sinner, he died for us. Thank you for your love. 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 We love you because you love us first. Thank you for your love. We are very appreciative. You kept us alive. You put food on our table. You keep our children. You preserve our life. You keep our job. Our going in and coming out are preserved. All because you love us. We bless your holy name. We say be praised forever in the mighty name of Jesus. This morning again, I want to draw out of that same love by looking through your word, believing and knowing you will bless us. This morning, as we look at your word, together as a church, please bless us again. Open our eyes to see the depthness of your love for us again. In the mighty name of Jesus. By your word, may we prosper. By your word, may we prosper. By your word, may we prosper. In all ways, and in all things. Show us more path to prosperity. In the mighty name of Jesus. By the time we be closing this service, may we all be glad that we came. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We appreciate you once again for your love. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And a living church will start to be better. Amen. Can I please be seated? God bless you. Thank you once again for coming. We appreciate you. We'll be talking about songs of prosperity. Since the very first Sunday of this month, I never knew it would go this long, but um, it has been extended this way. So we'll be talking about it once again this morning, song of prosperity. And today we'll be part three of that particular talk. And we'll be talking on the pathway, how God intended to prosper us and how we can prosper. Talk about please before you go. Talk about See before you go. God bless you. Pathway. We have been discussing the pathway to prosperity. And we have told us said that this month it is possible and it will be happen that God Himself will prosper us in all ways. How many ways? How many ways? Say God will prosper me in all ways. So God will prosper us in all ways and in all things. Not just in our way, but in all things. Good for life and for godliness. So God will prosper you, brethren, in all ways and in all things. Amen. If you are alive, say better amen. amen. So that's what we'll be discussing. And we'll be taking our test from Philippians 4, verse 19. Philippians 4, verse 19. Philippians 4, verse 19. That say, but my God, the first thing we saw at the first week was that he is my God. I don't know about you, but about me, he is what? My God. What about you? He is my God. So you say, but my God. In other words, some may have other things they are depending on. Because when you, see, but, when you say but, it simply means there are other options that others may put their mind into. But as far as as I am concerned, like Joshua was saying in 25 of Joshua, he said that as for me and my house, but for me, my God shall supply all my need. Not just some part of them, not just some little of them, all my need. And I told that time that as a human being, we have several, several need. Not just about money. Because most times when we talk about this reference, we are always thinking about money. But not about money. Good earth is there. Wisdom, ability to communicate effectively and good is there. Knowledge is there to know more than the next person to you, possibly in your work. Knowledge are two words combined together, know and edge. What you know that make you an edge. Take, for example, there are many tailors in this Olu, for example. 
if it will count how many tailor in this Oluwo, Oluwo that we are that we are living, if it will count how many tailor in this environment, might be counting up to hundred. There's hardly any street you get to, you not see a shop where a tailor is. But what make one tailor different from the other is what that person knows. His ability to design what others cannot design. His ability to put clothes on people's neck. And people will see and say, please, where do you sew this your clothes? Can you give me your tailor's number? Because I love redesign. That person knows something that that other person did not know. And that will give him an edge. The same thing in our life. The ability to excel, to know well, to excel, to prosper in knowledge belong to God. It's a need that we have. It's a need that we need. It's a need that must be met in all our life. Good health, as I said earlier on, that you can wake up in the morning, your leg is straight, your hand is straight. You can do, you can carry yourself and go up and down. Do whatever you want to do. It's prosperity. People will say that health is wet. If you're not feeling fine, you are having a headache or the leg is numb, maybe you wake up, God forbid, this morning and you try to stand up on your bed and the leg is not standing up. You'll be in this place this morning. It's very, very difficult. So prosperity also can be in health, can be in the life of our children. You send your child to, to school and the girl or the boy is coming back with good results. As a person, you are happy. As a parent, you are happy. That is prosperity. So it says in all ways, and in nothing, it is the mind of God that will prosper. In that work you are doing, many people are doing that same work, but God can, God can make it to be unique, to be different in that work. You can just prosper in that work. When Dangote, let me use that example because it's a thing we all know, began to sell sugar. There are many people that are selling sugar in Nigeria before him. He wasn't the founder of sugar. Am I saying the truth? He wasn't the father of sugar. Many people are selling sugar before he was born. But he got a time, he got interest. I said, I want to be selling sugar because he was an outside man and outside the Lord sugar. And by the time he made up his mind and he began to prosper in that job, he began to do what others are not doing in selling their sugar. Before you know it, even those he met in the field, he ran over them. He began to import sugar. Today, now in Nigeria, he's practically the only person importing sugar into Nigeria. We can say in that way, in that part, he has what? He has prospered. So it is possible for God to prosper you in whatever you are doing in a very short time to the extent that others will sought after you. And he now said that there is something that man does not have that you have. He said, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches. And God is vast in riches. It's a God that is vast in plenty, it says silver and gold are mine, according to Agai. Say silver and gold are mine. There is nothing you want that I don't have. I can give everything that you ever need for you. So if that is our God in Agai two verse A that says silver and gold are mine, a thousand gold upon a thousand E, they are mine. Therefore, I can supply all your need according to my riches. All your need, it doesn't matter, just mention it. Whatever you need is within that range. Through Christ Jesus. We simply mean, I will give you everything you ever wanted through Jesus Christ. So it is the will of God that will prosper in all ways, in nothing, including having plenty of money, never the out of the mind of God, including having peace of mind, good health, including having abundance, being able to pay your children's school fees, being able to put food on your table, even this is not famine in our country, is a sign of prosperity that God is on your side. And He has said, "My God, I don't know it's about you. My God, say to yourself, my God shall supply all my need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus." And I told you then I will give you major ways by which God do supply. All our needs. And we are still talking about one. I pray we can finish it before the end of the year, or end of the month, rather. So, last week we talked about things that we can do, the path, the road, or the principle to being blessed of God, to being prosper of God, to be enlarged 
by God, to be blessed by God. Now, we see you just say, man, I mentioned now, to give you one principle. Because the people outside there, they even understand this principle sometimes that we that are in the church and how this principle can open the way for you and make you prosper in no way and in nothing. And lastly, you talk about giving. And I tell you then, that's the one mistake you normally make, that when you talk about giving and we, somebody mentioned giving, your mind will go to money and quickly you conclude in your mind, I don't have money so I cannot give. No, money is not about giving. There are several things you can give. Like you are here now, you are giving your time to God. You are giving your attention to God. That is giving. So giving to God and giving to man is one way and one route to prosperity. That was what we began to discuss last week. And we saw several aspects of way you can give to God and you can also give to man and can come back to you in time of blessing. We say praying to God can be a blessing, can be a means of giving. Praying for others can be a means of giving. We are told of Job in 42 Job verse 10 that Job prayed for his friend and God in return blessing. Giving to the poor, helping those that are in need. You know, even as simple as you going on the road and somebody says, sir, ma, I don't know my way, describe for me. That can be a giving. And you describe correctly for the person without fear. Some type of are afraid. If I describe for this person, if it's an evil person, it might take my manhood or my turn into a zombie. I don't know what I'm doing. They can be following him. If you are a child of God, no one can turn into a zombie. Amen? And nobody can take what is yours away from you. So with a whole heart, with a heart of gratitude, you describe the way for the person. Don't be like people's Lagos. Sometimes you ask them for direction. They will describe for you to go back again. And where you are going, just somewhere ahead of you like this. People like that can never be blessed. Amen? So, you are a blessing. Don't be afraid that if I do it now, somebody says some people are beggars. When they ask for things and you give them, they can't use your money to go and do ritual and they will become prosper more than you and you will now know. If they are prosper, they will not be begging. Amen? You are not saying hallelujah. So, giving is much more deeper than all those. Nobody can turn that which is mine against me. It is written, no weapon, fashion against us. Shall what? shall prosper. Because the Bible says, do not forget to do good. For by so doing, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. That person that is begging by the roadside and sorting your spirit, it's not your spirit, say don't give. Because if it's an evil person, if you're a child of God, God might say, don't just go your way, don't give to that person, don't mind him or her. But if God is telling your mind, give to her, please do. Don't be afraid. Because no weapon, fashion against you shall what? Shall prosper. Because that person that is, by the way, I'm begging, can be an angel, you never know. And dressing like someone in need. There was this day, Abraham was outside his house, taking fresh air, outside his tent, and was taking some fresh air, and some four, three, not four now, three old men came by the way. And no, there was, was in desert. And it was in the evening, Abraham welcomed them. And ah, ah, why are you going? It's already late. And desert is dangerous. If you continue like this, you might fall into the hand of robbers. Come inside. Come and take fresh air. Come and sit down with me. He gave them water. He looked at their faces. They look hungry. He says, Sarah, go and kill one of the animals. You know, they are happy, happy animal. And they dress it and they make food for them. And they ate. And while they finish eating, the most senior among them, the older among the oldest among them, Look at Sarah and say there is no child in this house. Then by this time we are coming back again next year, and Sarah will have a child. And the woman heard behind the door and she was laughing. Uh uh-uh, uh, I'm 90 years old now. This old man, is it because I gave you panayem to eat? You have eaten and your mouth is not talking nonsense. How can you say I will have a, at the age of 90? And the person heard and said, Your wife is talking in the kitchen. That is not possible. I say by this time next year I will come and you have a child. It was after the meeting and they were going that Abraham realized that two of those three men are angels. And the oldest of them was not even an angel, but God himself. May you not miss opportunity in the mighty name of Jesus. I say may you not miss opportunity in Jesus' mighty name. Imagine if Abraham had said, I know this old man, this old man, they are liars, they are looking for who they will take this destiny. And they will carry my money and go and do ritual. And they will turn me to nobody. They will not be rich. And now you ignore them. We Abraham have been blessed. 
No, may not miss opportunity in Jesus' mighty name. So giving can be a, a way of prosperity. It may be as small as a cold water. Giving water out, it doesn't matter. Uh, so it's either uh, free or you got it free or not. You just give water out to those that have it. People that have a well, don't dry this. If you go to the house, they will lock their gate. And the, river, and the well have water, but they will never allow others to fetch from it. If you are like that, you are delaying your blessing. These are many ways you can bless us. Not necessarily me by giving out money. And we also said that if you are a person that have worker under you, that you pay a worker as at when due, can be a way that God blesses you. And we saw that in Deuteronomy 24, 14 to 15, Deuteronomy 24, 14 to 15, that if you deny your workers their wages, if they cry to God and they pray to God, you might be denying yourself of the blessing. Now for today, service to God and service to men can be a way to prosper. Please, I want you to listen to this very carefully. If you want to prosper in all ways and in nothing, service to God and service to man is one way to achieve it. And listen, as I said it, service to who first? To God. And to who? And to man. Men and women around you. It's one major way, iconic way by which God can prosper us. Let's see Acts chapter 10 verse 1 and 2. Act 10 verse 1 and 2. An example of somebody there that God really blessed because he knew how to serve God and how to serve people around him. Act 10 verse 1 to 2. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Nicodemus and Colonius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, which means was a soldier and a captain. Because for it to be a centurion, a centurion is someone that have nothing less than between a hundred and a thousand person under him. So he won't have less than a hundred soldiers under him. It's a big title. Even today, army. If you are a, an army and you have a hundred under you, even today, you are likely to be a general. So it was a, a centurion having commands under him. Verse 2, verse 2, a devout man. Somebody say a devout man. A devout man, that's all in a devoted man, and one that feared God with all his house, who gave much harm to the people and prayed to God always. Now, I want you to saw in that place that this man was a devout man, a devoted man, a completely committed man to God. So, one way to be blessed of God is to be completely committed to Him, to be completely be blessed of him to be committed to him and in verse 4 or that's a place verse 4 verse 4 and when he looked on him in verse um, in verse 3 he saw a vision evidently about the minute out of the way an angel of God coming into into him and say unto him colonials God had to send an angel to this man he said and when he looked unto this angel he was afraid and the, and he said unto the angel what is it Lord and he said to him, Thy prayers, number one, and thy arms are come for a memorial before God. Two things. Your prayer that you are praying is before God. God has heard you. I pray you had that kind of good news in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. If you are praying for anything whatsoever, house, car, fame, popularity, increase in your income, blessing upon your family, upon your upon your business, good health, maybe there's a particular body that's paying you, you are in one form or the other sick, and you'll be using tablet or taking injection, and the thing's not going, but you know you are just, you just need God to touch you, and suddenly, one day, an angel appears to you in your room, and say, Michael, don't bother yourself. All your prayer are before God about this thing you are praying for. From that day, you'll be worried again. You're not answering me. You will never be worried again. It means... God has seen my request. It's like you wrote a letter to the president and he replied to you and say, your letter is on my table. From that day, you know the thing is already, already done. That, oh God, God said, go and tell this man, all your prayer is on my table. And say that prayer are coming to me and your arms. The thing you'll be doing for others in my name are all before me. So number one, the man is a devout man, service to God. He was completely devoted to God. 
he put God first in all things. He never allowed the enemy to corner him. When there is a clash between his interests, between what he wants, and God, he picked God first. When there is a clash, God is always number one on his list. That is where many of us have failed. We never put God on, your, on, your, on, God on our, one of our list. Whatever that will deny you of God can also deny you of the blessing that come from him. Whatever. It might be your spouse. It might be your child. Mommy, why are you not coming to the evening program again before you used to come? It's because of this, your children and a good pastor inside of his heart, they say, if they're my children, they'll be in church. Amen? So, whatever deny you, your devotion to God, when before you get that, got that job, you're always there. When they call in the morning, you are there. When they come in the noon, afternoon, evening, you are there. You are always available. But now the job is not your hand. You are going up and down, traveling here and there. And they say, bro, you no longer see you in the church. Yeah, this my work is so, is so calm, it's so busy. And this work is not allowing me at all to have time to serve God. And you now be asking yourself, is God guilty by giving me this job? A devoted man, he put God first. In all things. That's one way to get the blessing of God. Take, for example, if you are my friend, but you don't put me in as a priority on your list. Anything that's a blessing for me will not come to you. And the same thing, you just like a man that is married to a woman, or a woman married to a man, and this woman don't put the husband as a priority, the man will not be interested in taking care of the woman. And vice versa. So if God is not a priority on your list, it's always number two. You always see all that request and taking care of them first before you take care of God's own. You are not a devoted person. It is sitting here, this man, a centurion, having 100 people at least under him, a very big man. But yet it was said of him, a devoted man. That cannot be said of other centurions like himself. But he said of him that he was a devoted man. You are not even rich yet. You, you don't even have two, three people working under you. And yet you are, not, you are invisible. Now, if you now have 10 people, 50 people working under you, you become super invisible. No wonder God is not blessing some people. God, God knows it. If I give this one, I'll give him only 100 pounds to be managing. I'm not seeing him again. It's not, no more prayer, no more anything, no Bible reading, no more church. If I not give him one, one million or two million to manage, he will disappear and straight to hell. God says, Michael, don't give that money first. Hold it. When it's my show, we'll give it to him. Now it's not my show. That way, many of us are denying ourselves of being blessed. Say, my God shall supply all my need. Before he supply all my need, it must be what? My God. And if it's my God, then I must be devoted to him. That was what we saw in that man there. He was a devoted man to God. And a man that feared God with all his house. See that verse 2 there. He said, a devoted man and one that feared God with all his house. Sometimes as parents, we fear God. We love to serve God. But we don't carry our children along. Take, for example, early in the morning, 6 a.m., we are to do family devotion. And the, one of the children is still sleeping. And mommy or daddy will say, don't wake him up. If you wake him up or wake her up now, she will have a headache. Let her do her sleeping while we are clapping and serving God. And that boy be hearing them, he's hearing them clapping and singing his, his dream, he means uh, sleep, or oh, that girl. But the, because they didn't wake him or how, each of you pretend they don't know anything they are doing. They are serving God, they love God, but not with all their house. Joshua so said, as for me, and what? And my house. It's always us and our house, not us alone. Some is the wife that be doing the house the, with the children. Some daddy with the children. Mommy is sleeping. No. Even one is sleeping, they go and wake him up. Please stand up. It is time for family devotion. A man that feared God with all his house and gave more harm to the people. That is where the service to man comes now. The man was blessed and the little that God has given to him, it was also reaching out to others. He looked at the less privileged around him. Those are not as blessed as his children, they will pick the clothes that children are not wearing again. They go and give others that, that need it. 
how they will not pick the clothes. God forbid they use my children's clothes to go and do juju or do medicine and uh, go and pick the clothes and go and burn it. No, that is not good. It's not good. Look for somewhere else that clothes can be of blessing to. Or this shoe is no longer entering your leg. You go and someone that can wear the shoe. Don't go and destroy it because you are afraid. No weapon. Fashion against a child of God shall do what? Shall prosper. Even you basically most surely go pay me. Only you can do Only can you know it? Even the world do they know it? How much more in the church? The world say even if you do good and you are afraid that the good may bounce back on you, it because that good you are doing yourself, you have some bad thing inside of your mind. You are doing it. Maybe you are doing it for a particular selfish reason, or you are not sincere about it. But if you do, you are sincere about it. No, no evil can come near you. So this man was a man that gave much harm to the people. And lastly, in that same verse 2, he said, and he prayed to God always. Now, Sama, when last do you pray to God? Aside our prayer, we are praying here now. Maybe after you are close, you close your eyes and pray. Do you pray to God? Do you have a particular time? You say, I, myself, I want to pray to God. This is a way that God bless people. He prayed to God away. He was devoted man to God. His family too fear God with him. He made sure that it happened. That happened. Is the type that make his, his uh, family a source of blessing to others. And he prayed to God always. Somebody, I was talking to somebody that time. He said he put a tap outside his house for others to be fetching water from. And they spoiled the tap. And because they spoiled the tap, he refused to repair it. A child of God will not do that. You won't do that. Because the water you give outside, the devil knows that you'll be blessed by it. Jesus Christ said, anyone that give a, cold, or a cup of cold water, just a cup of cold water, to a disciple in his name, that he will receive an hundredfold of it, both in this life and the life to come. And you, you are not even giving a cup of cold water, you are giving buckets out. As many as they can fetch. Just because one devil now go and spoil it. Now say devil, I cooperate with you. I will not want to be blessed again. Me too, I will not repair it. Who is losing? You or the outsiders? It is you. Christian, don't think like that. Once they spoil it, you repair again. Toba soon one won't go and spoil them, huh? They be the one protecting it. And say if you spoil that thing, we come and arrest in your house. Amen. Praise the Lord. So these are ways that. We must serve God and serve people for God to bless us. I want the reward. Number one, you see, let's see verse 10. And verse 7 of that place. Act 10, verse 7. And when the angel which spake unto Corinthians, you know, God sent an angel to him. And he speak, and after speaking to him, and when the angel which spake unto Corinthians was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devoted soldier of them that waited on him continually. Because himself was devoted, God too gave him someone that was also devoted to him. Can you see how things play out? So God bless him with dedicated workers and more. If you are dedicated to God and you love God, God will make others to dedicate to you and to love you. Give and shall be what? Be given back unto you. And that man was able to do the bidding of Lenos. If you see it down to that place, you will see that God spoke on his behalf. God sent an angel to him before and told him to go and meet Peter, where Peter was. Before he got to Peter, God has spoke to Peter too on his uh, behalf. If you are devoted to God, you carry your family along to serve God. You are giving arms, helping the less privileged. The best you can don't have to be something big and be something just small. My not so small as teaching your neighbor's daughter or son that couldn't attend lesson because they don't have money on how to count A, B, C, D. It can be as small as that. That's why I said, oh, not all about money. Or it can be as small as uh, you have something in your house. Maybe you buy a carton of Indomie. You pick two or three. Give your neighbor's son that you know they cannot afford. That is how to give arm. And you pray always like that man having time for God. One of the reasons why you don't pray as individuals is because we don't have time for God. We are always too busy. And when you have run up and down, up and down, up and down, we are tired, we enter our bed, we fall down like this and sleep, we don't go because we are tired. A tired body can never pray to God. 
Tell your friend. A tired body. Say it again. Say it convincingly. No. If you use all your time to run around, you are tired. When time to pray come, prayer will be sleeping medicine. You are, you are praying, you are already seeing in Jamaica your dream. Praise the Lord. So, a God speak on his behalf and God bless all his household. By the time you read to 44 and 45. So, always look for opportunity to bless God and to bless others around you. The Bible says in Galatians 6, 10, Galatians 6, 10, say good to all, do good to all men. All men, Muslim, pagan, Christian, do good to all men. Especially of those or the household of faith. Do good to all men, but especially those in the church of God, you must be able to be a blessing to them. Let's see another example of someone that's devoted to God like this, and God to pay her back in a way that is beyond our understanding. Look at this man. He was giving good to men. He was giving arm to men, and was praying to God. He was serving God. The best he could was a devoted man. And God has to personally send an angel to attend to him. What kind of reward can be bigger than that? Say, give to be given back unto you. What he gave will be far, far smaller to what God has given to him in return. In that same act, chapter 9, let's go back to where we had before. We are in chapter 10. Now let's go back to chapter 9 and see another example there of this man, a woman. The first one was a man. Now, a woman, see 36 to 42. Act 9, 36 to 42. Sorry, please. Yes, Act 9, 36. And now there, now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha. He was a disciple, which means he was a devoted person, like the fourth person. Which by interpretation is called Dukas. This man was full of what? You are not there? This man was full of what? Good words and harm did which she did. One way to reach the heart of God is to do harm. Don't fail to do it. Nobody is too poor to give. So this man was full of good harm which he did, which he was doing. And verse 36. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick. Anybody can fall sick. And this woman too was sick. And her own sickness was even worse. She died. She was sick and died. When, when, when they had washed, they prepared her for burial and lay her in an upper chamber. And as much as Lida was nigh unto Joppa, and the disciple heard that Peter was there, they sent unto Peter two men, desiring him that he should come quickly Unto to delay to go and see what is happening. Then when Peter arose and went with them, when he was come, they brought him unto the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping, and showing to Peter the coats and garments which Docard made, which why she was with them. Oh, see this clothes she gave to my son. See this clothes. She, my daughter, she gave, see this shoe. They were going to that. He didn't give them money. Is there money there? No. She looked to her house very well. What can I give to this house? So she gave. Sometimes I do that. When somebody needs something or somebody, I need to, I need to look at my house. What do I give now? I don't have money to give. If I have two years of clothes, go and take this year, go and sew it. If I look at it, I can say, okay, I have one extra shoe. I'll not be wearing it correctly. Go take this. So look at your house. What do you have? I can easily look on. It might even be as small as a biro. To give to a child. You are in a church like this and you see that boy is not writing or doing like this. And Bible is not writing very well. You put it in your mind. Next time I'm coming and give that boy a Bible. Are you hearing me at all? Give that boy a Bible. One day I was in church, I saw this young man. His bed, he wasn't having bed. And he told me he'd be doing like this every time. Every time. And then I had two beds in my house. Newly bought. One, this one I'm using. That's why today I have only one I'm using now. That one was a black. I know they bought it and I say, okay. Let, I didn't say anything. Next time I say, sir, come. Take this bet. One day my pastor then now at church. I look at his Bible, Otiya, Otibo. And I say, how can my Bible, Bible, my Bible be new? My pastor own is old. I put it in my mind. Next time I was coming, daddy, take this Bible. 
the following Sunday, he carried to church. Do you think I'll be happy or not? So it's not about money. It's about you being observant. Look at this boy. The streets do like this. The left one, Kano. The right one, River State. And God can bless you with a shoe. Say, why is this boy always wearing this bad shoe? Don't know. You say, and this is your shoes. Go and meet the boy. This is your shoes. You're even old. Now why are you wearing it? You are disgracing the young man. Just go to somewhere. Look at his eyes to style. Or use somebody's house, somehow to use style. Ask for his size. Go and get a new shoe and give. It might be clothing. These are ways to touch lives. If you are like that, God too will find a way to touch your life. So this man was giving her old clothes, not even new ones. God he said we, she will make it. In other words, she will repair it and give them. She wasn't depositing naira and dollar, but she was taking from little she has and what? And was giving them. And they were all showing Peter. Look at what she did. And Peter was, that it was 40. Uh, but Peter put them all forth. Peter was moved to cry. He would just go outside first. And he knelt down and prayed to God and said to Tabitha, Arise, and she opened her eyes. And they were 41, she sat up. Which means, before she can die, it simply means when she was sick, she was not able to stand up again. Are we, are we, am I saying something now? Huh? She must have been on the bed for a long time, not able to stand up. Now, her eyes open. What the next thing she did? She stood up. Which means the sickness that killed her was no longer in her body. She was healed, and she was made whole, and she raised, rose again from the dead. And she sat and put, called, Peter called them outside and presented her to them alive. Now, the clothes she was giving those women, and God giving her a life back. Which one is bigger? So when I will say, give, it shall be given back unto you. Press down. Shake it together. The same mail you give, I was explaining last week, God will give to you. It doesn't matter me that when you give 1,000, God will give you 1,000. Your own reward might be bigger than 1,000, depending on the value of what you give. And I give an example last week. I said, a family is of non eating, maybe yesterday night, this morning they have non eating, and by chance you look at the daughter or the son eyes, the boy is looking hungry, and you say, ah, why are you like this? I feel you too eating. Uh, I don't eat yesterday, and this morning you have no eating in our house. You didn't say anything. Just put your hand in your pocket, and you say, go and give mommy this one. One thousand era. And the boy came. I said, mommy, take that, daddy, or that mommy gave me. And you say, mommy, I show. And she's happy. And she went to home and cooked rice. My mommy used to call it MTN. Rice with oil. Is it not empty, eh? Yellow rice. It's very sweet, too. If you put correct salt, you don't need maggi. Just put salt. It's okay. And salt is not expensive. And the woman cooked empty, eh? and the children ate. And everybody, okay. And God will bless you. God will not bless you with the value of that one thousand. Number one, the children are happy. God will look at the value of the happiness they have. Number two, maybe in the, so in the stomach of the one of the children, it's already getting wound. Also, don't they start small, small? And now, the one time you get them to eat, they ate, the other side was healed. As soon as you didn't get that money for the next 10 years, that guy be, or that boy he be battling with uh, us. Even when God has blessed them, and money has come, but us refused to, to go. He be man be buying by mercy, by mercy. God will value all the money you have spent on other us for that 10 years of troubling us. Value it together. And when God will bless you now, now bless you back in the return with the value of all those things that one thousand has done in their life. Go now look at this one. Like say, in the next two years, this man is supposed to have this sickness, and after two years, the sickness will just kill him. But because of what he did for this family, he just hid this sickness. And two years came. You don't even know that God has even hear you. You never even see the sickness. And you say, God, I give the one thousand that time. I never see the reward though. But in the eye of God, God has hear you. Of your own sickness, I will not kill you ahead of time. Give. Shall we what? Good mayor. Press down. Shake it together. God will press, shake it, evaluate it, and give to you back. That's how God blesses. But because we are blind to these things, we give God 10,000. You are expecting 10,000 naira back. It's far beyond that. Amen. So, giving arm is a way to touch the heart. Of God and this man, this man was giving her life back, not just 
the money or the clothes she was given to them, she was healed. He was rewarded with a good life, a good health back, and God give her healing and give her even her life back in return to what she gave. And one other way you can serve God is to be a solution provider and serve men. Solution provider. And that's one way that God can bless you and put money in your pocket. I don't know if I've been praying that prayer. I may have prayed before. That God, can you just give me more understanding on how to store Nepal light into water? I've been praying it. Sometimes Nepal want to disgrace you, we give you light. So tell you, don't know what to use light for. Have you seen that before? 24 hours. It didn't just be, oh, uh, you'll be thinking in your mind, how do I keep this thing? Because you might not see it again for the next one week. And one day, God just wake you up from your dream and say, Ma, sir, wake up. If you do like this, do like this, do like this, you can store this energy. And others can come and be buying from you. Are you not a millionaire already? But you are thinking how to solve the problem of Nepal. But in the God is making you a millionaire. That's one way that God works at times. So when you begin to think on how to solve problem of people, on how to provide solution to issue an end, then you begin to see God ma- manifesting himself and helping you to provide service for others and so be a blessing to yourself also. Tell yourself, I'm a solution giver in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> Say it correctly, so it boldly. So it's not the will of God for any one of us to stay in one position, not knowing what to do, not seeing how it can be a blessing to others. Don't just look. Look with your inner eyes. Look around you. What can I do to can be a blessing to others and at the same time a blessing to me? Look around you. What can I do to be a blessing to others and put something on the table or somebody somewhere? And that way, God can make you a blessing both to him and to yourself and to people around you. But many times we are confused. We are confused with activities. We see, we got ourselves involved with, we are conceived and confused with um, running up and down just to make money. And uh, it's good to run up and down to do those things, but sometimes it's far beyond that. We neglect the major thing. I mean, focus on the less. I pray that God will open our eyes. That we will not just be running around for running around our sake. But we serve God with all our heart and with all our being. As we're supposed to in the mighty name of Jesus. So the question you ask yourself that, what can I do to help others? If others in the past have given arms and God in return have blessed them, what can I also do? To be a blessing to others. There's a child somewhere now that doesn't know what to do it this morning. You can be a blessing. Sometimes I look at people, I love, I, I, maybe it's a gift, I don't know. When I look at people, I look at their faces. If you're hungry, I will know. And I say, What's wrong with you? Are you hungry? Shall they children? No, they can't hide it. As adults, you can be smiling and be hungry. It's possible. But children can't hide theirs. You see a child frowning her face, frowning his face, and looking unhappy. Why don't you approach that boy and ask, what is the problem? It might be that for the past one week, the boy has somebody going to school. And tomorrow is Monday. He's already confused. I will not go tomorrow again because there's no school fees. And here you are. You have one extra ten thousand on your cupboard. You don't even know what to use the money for. You can be a blessing to somebody. Say, I will be a blessing to somebody in the mighty name of Jesus. That is God's way of bringing prosperity. And it's not all about money, I tell you. About service to God and service to man. There is something you can do for the church. There is a role you can play in the church. It may be as small as sweeping the church. That may be your role. It may be as small as these chairs are clean now. We all came down and sit down. Somebody clean it. Do you know that? It's not clean by yourself. That can be your own commitment to God. It's not everything that is money. If you have the money, thank God. But there are many things you can do without money. As a matter of fact, money is the least thing to serve God. Money is the least thing to serve God. I've seen millionaire before, or I've heard of millionaire before, sweeping church. That they said there's no other place to be part. One time you go to that camp, that camp in Lagos, by the road. You see people that are picking papers. 
picking pure water, that people drop on the, on the ground, picking empty bottles on the ground. Some of them are millionaires, so. so you know. And God will not see those things and close his eyes. So one way that God blesses us is that we are devoted to him and devoted to each other. I love you, love me. I watch after your welfare, you watch after my welfare. And you cannot really do that if you are not committed to this God. Devoted to him. Make him your number one priority. You are willing to have a loss because of God. Say for example, you are here this morning now. Huh? Somebody said, it's supposed to be here by 8 o'clock, right? Somebody come and knock your door, like mommy selling rice, for example. And somebody knock your door at 7.50. And then the bag of rice. Na, 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 see my money. And she knew that if she go and open shop and sell bag of rice, she will come here late. She now had to decide to go and sell a bag of rice and come to church late. Or say, sir, come back after service. I can't come back, keep your money and come to to show. She had to have it. She had to choose. Which one do you think she will choose to show to God that I'm devoted? You are even afraid to say it. Mommy, answer yourself. Which one will you show? Which one will you do to show that you are devoted? Do you know that our Muslim friend, that most smarter and decent than us? I work in Kano, Kote Kori. Kote Kori is one of the biggest market in Nigeria. I don't know if it's bigger than Balogun. I've not been Balogun before. But Kote Kori is one of the biggest and one of the richest market in Nigeria. Matter of fact, I will say it's delicious. You can see people pulling and there's no rubber there. All this rubber you see not in the south here. Because in the north, they don't, they don't have rubber in the north. If you carry anything in the north, you carry back yourself. I don't know how they are doing it. If you rob, don't want want some people come and rob a good a good uh, shop there. Once they call on to the after one week. Praise the Lord. So, no rubber there. People will be pushing with barrel like this. Billion or a nail or million on big barrel to where they will pay. They don't keep money in bank. Money, so they, just they dig a hole in their shop. But not go on one, see? But, sir, ma, I have, we have customers that are for, that buy for us and they sell with us. They can buy as much as 150 million worth of clothes. I was working with the clothes company then. Can buy as 50 million. 50 million is even when they don't buy anything. All those 150 million she will buy, she will buy, he will buy. It's cash. The coins, I do if I remember the name by the way. He will buy cash, 150 million. And all the money we can't in his shop. But, sir, ma, Bring 200 million for that man on a Friday afternoon by one, if he never collect. I'm seeing with sincerity. If he never collect, if he tell you wait until we come back. If you cannot wait, Sanjuma, bye bye. If it is me and you, ah, George, stay first. Let me say to this matter you can't remove devotion from prosperity. The two are not in agreement. Or in, in, in agreement. Once God discovers you are not devoted, it will find it hard to bless you. That's the truth. That's the this Muslim friend. Even though they have no Jesus Christ, but they are prospering. There are more billionaires in the north than in the south. You don't know now. There are not billionaires in the north than in the south. You don't just make noise in it. Like our own, making us everything on Facebook. You know, I see a lot of do on Facebook. Like, I couldn't phone, I couldn't phone, I phone, I let her loan low. Now they show this man, I can't remember the name. He has a university, he has an eyeline, he has um, a, I can't remember the third one he has. He do not need a headline from right. He has a plane to own fish, a business. Tony Sheep, older than university, he was riding back to his farm. He has jeep in his house, so he has all kind of castle, but that money was climbing back to his farm and he has no fear they will rob him. Because people around them love them because they are devoted. Not to God, but to the poor as well. On a Friday or Friday morning later, they will cook food, all the allergies, as, as a billionaire as he is, they will all eat from the same plate with all their manjiri and hand. How will you tell God that you love him more than that? When a billionaire is sitting in the same plate with an amanjiri. But we believer, immediately God bless you like this, even church you won't come again. Pastor, don't worry, I will send my tithe. But me, I'm not available. May God not regret blessing us in Jesus' mighty name. 
devotion and prosperity go hand in hand to God and to man. You must choose God first. Immediately, God becomes number two. A problem we exist. I am going to bow here and say, Father, please help me to be devoted to you and to people around me in the mighty name of Jesus. Our Muslim friend, they got this understanding better than us. On a Friday afternoon, go there. You see this boy playing ball here on Sunday morning. No Muslim friend, no Muslim boy come and play ball here on Friday afternoon. Go and go and go and go and couple it. Come and play here. Or not come and play here on, on afternoon. No good Muslim boy come and play here on afternoon Friday. But a Christian boy, see them now playing ball with the Muslim boy. But on Friday, the Muslim will not be here. Say, God, please help me to be truly devoted to you. Because that's a way to prosperity. Lord, help me in the mighty name of Jesus. And to be devoted to people around me to find a way or be a blessing to others. Lord, please help me in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't understand this because understanding before. I misunderstand this. I've not done it well in the past. No wonder things are a bit hard. Lord, please, for now and forth, help me to choose right, to align my priority right, to put you first and not myself first. Father, please help me in the mighty name of Jesus to always see you as a source of my blessing. The Bible says this man was devoted to God and he taught his family so they were, taught, they were devoted to and it's a man that give arms and pray always and God couldn't just stay in heaven looking at this man he sent angel to him. Oh, Docas was sick and dead and died and yet when people begin to show forth what Docas had done in their life, God in heaven heard their voice and gave this man her life back. Lord, everything that is dead in me that ought to be alive by reason of my good work begin to bring them back now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every that is dead in me that's supposed to be alive. Is it my head? Is it the head of my children? Is it my family head? Whatever it is in me that the enemy is attacking and is allowing you to be dying instead of being alive. Lord, wake them up again by raising my commitment to you. If you are not committed, that prayer will be difficult to pray. Say, Father, please help me from today to choose rights, to align my priority right. To make you my number one in the mighty name of Jesus. So that in return, I can say my God, because I know he's my God and I'm devoted to him. I can say my God shall supply all my need. Father, please help me in the mighty name of Jesus to be truly devoted, wholly devoted to you and to people around me in the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to have children thing very soon. How much I want to support with, even if it's 10 naira. Is something to add to bless somebody's child somewhere. Father, please help me in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Brethren, I pray for you. God will open your eyes. Amen. He will give you understanding to these things. Amen. Of a truth, when you say, My God, even God in heaven will know that it's your God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. From now, you will be devoted to Him. From now, you will be committed to him. From now, you will make God your number one. In the mighty name of Jesus. And because you are proposing your mind to make God number one in all you do, in your business, in your daily life, in all you do, God himself will make you number one on this list in the mighty name of Jesus. He will send angels to you. The same way he sent angels to Abraham, send angels to this man we talk about. God himself will send angels to you. Angels will buy from you. I say it again, angel will buy from you. They will prosper your business in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I pray for our children to are proposing their mind to serve God. God will send help to you in your academics in the mighty name of Jesus. As you read, you have understanding. Bigger and better than your teachers in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Are we blessed at all? If you are blessed, you can offering to the Lord. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray God will give us understanding on how to serve you and serve him better. If you don't love money more than you love our God in Jesus' mighty name. I say you will not love money more than you love your God in Jesus' mighty name. And in return, God will bless you. He will prosper you. He will make your life beautiful. He will remove famine from your life. You will serve God in plenty in your head, plenty in your business, plenty in your family, in the mighty name of Jesus. I say it again, you will serve God in plenty in Jesus' mighty name. And the day you need God to speak on your behalf, angel and God will speak for you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we have declared. Amen. Amen. Can you bring our feet as we put it to a close? Please wave your hand to him and thank for what you have heard today. Thank you because he loves you. That's why you are sending this to you this afternoon. Thank him and bless him. Thank him and bless him. And say, Father, as I go this week, let me begin to practice what I've heard. To really love you and to love people around me. Lord, please, Father, help me in the mighty name of Jesus. This thing can be difficult. It requires discipline. It requires making up your mind. Say, God, I will serve you with my life. I will serve you with my being. I will make you my number one. I will put you ahead of everything. You will be on top of my list. Father, please help me in the mighty name of Jesus. I will no longer cooperate with darkness, with evil. I will put you number one because you are my God and you are able to supply all my needs. You will make me prosper in no way and make me prosper in no things. And to do that, it means I must be committed to you. Father, please help me in the mighty name of Jesus. As Colonel was committed and you remember him. As Dorcas was committed and you remember her. Lord, remember me too in the mighty name of Jesus. All my commitment of the past, remember them. All the one I'm doing now, remember them. Make me truly committed to you. And make me truly prosperous as well. In the mighty name of Jesus. When you are counting prosperous men in Nigeria, my name will be mentioned in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, say it. When you are counting prosperous women in Nigeria, your name should be mentioned in the mighty name of Jesus. When you are counting prosperous men, prosperous businessmen in Nigeria, I will be on the list by reason of my devotion to God. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. As I declare to your mouth, so shall it be for you. Amen. Name of God the Father. Amen. I say, so it be for you. Amen. Name of God the Son. Amen. I say again, so it shall be for you. Amen. Name of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Can you put your hands up? I pray for you. May God go with you this week. Amen. God will preserve you. Amen. Underneath your everlasting hand. Amen. You will not make mistake. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. This week you will see angel buy from you. Amen. Angel will walk with you. Amen. Angel will help you. They will come to your assistance. God will send help to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And the same way that God remembered Colonial and spoke on his behalf, God will remember you and speak on his, your behalf in the mighty name of Jesus. There was a day Laban was going to kill Jacob and God spoke to him in a dream. If you touch that man, I will kill you myself. And Laban said, it because God spoke to me, I didn't kill you. The same way this week, anyone that meant evil for you, that will do you bad, God will speak to them. In their dream, in the mighty name of Jesus. And uh, if they say go ahead, they want to do what they will do, they will pay with their own life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Underneath your sins against everlasting arm, you will walk and fly on eagle's wing. And you will prosper in all ways. And you will prosper in all things. And your devotion to God shall be number one in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. May God bless you and keep you. May God shine a face upon you. And be gracious towards you. May God lift up his curtain upon you and give you peace. Peace upon your life. Peace upon your marriage. Peace upon your work. Peace upon your academics. Peace upon your soul. Peace upon your spirit. Peace in your family. In the mighty name of Jesus. As you are doing business, business men and women, you will see peace this week. And your income will greatly increase by raising of this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. And so it is. Name of God the Father. Name of God the Son. Name of God the Holy Spirit. And I put God's name upon you and upon your children. I declare you are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.